Welcome back guys to another video. Today I'm going to be doing commentary over a best of three that I played against DJ Paco. Some of you might know him. He's a very formidable dragon player. Consistently makes it to the top 200 hero league. So it's quite an honor to be going against a person this skilled. So he starts off with his dragon and then a pretty nice green prototypes into double box. He definitely has something I'm a bit scared of right now, which is that those dragons are going to die next turn, and they're going to spawn another dragon on the tile bordering his finless lizards. So I'm going to just try and rush him out, kill him before he manages to gain too much advantage, because if you didn't know, dragons at level 1 are some of the scariest things that I've ever seen. So as you can see, roamers are going to get 4 for 4 with 2 movement, which is quite nice. But he set me up perfectly for a beautiful Toxic Sacrifice. It's going to clear pretty much everything and make it so I'll survive for a couple more turns. So with him having no board presence and his bait only being at 6, I'm pretty sure I have this game locked down. But who knows, could bust out something quite crazy. And it turns out he does not. Just a couple little units, which is going to be perfect for my Bragda. He eats those for breakfast. Yeah. And those get buffed up pretty good. Now, if he has Salty Outcasts, that's going to be a problem. Because I believe they do exactly 5 damage at level 1. But it seems he does not. As he just has his flameless lizards and dreadful keepers, and that is game one. Alright, on to game two. This time I'm playing an ironclad deck. So I start off with upgrade point, which is pretty optimal. Now the only thing I can hope for is I got mech I got mech workshop next turn. Temple of Heart, that's quite strange. But I do get the mech workshop, so it's a pretty good start for me. Every time it spawns a construct, it's gonna be buffed, so it's gonna be quite hard for him to gain any sort of value if he can't move up and destroy them fast enough. And yeah, and then I get the perfect turn three with destructive bots into link golems. Five for five, but it's just the construct synergy is very, very strong. And then here I just go for a little bit of a value play, getting two units buffed up by fortification tonic while also making it so that he can't attack any of my units. And I want to keep him back so that way that the workshop keeps spawning constructs. Here he gets a really big dangerous shooters, but if he played it on the other side it would have blocked. Here it doesn't. So I think I'll be doing fine. I decided to keep him back for just one more turn and the next turn I'll go for the kill. I was thinking of doing Project Phoenix into his dragons, but I don't think it would have been really worth it when I could kill him so fast with this deck. Yeah, and you see here, he lets me buff up my dues one more time and leaves the right pocket open for me to plant some big units down. Yeah. So, there is 6 strength on his line, and they will both be buffed up by the, the upgrade point next turn, which will be 10 damage, lethal overkill by 1, yeah, and he gets another Temple of the Heart down, but it's too late, and that is game 2. Now on to game 3, I think I made quite a lot of mistakes in this, but... If I make mistakes, I don't know. It just shows I'm still human too. Sadly, sometimes we cycle cards and it doesn't end up doing very good. Looking back, I probably should have cycled things way differently. But it's in the past. Luckily, he doesn't have too good of a start for me. So that allows me to get down a Trekking Alderman. And he gets 
Striking Alderman gets a 3 for 5 value, which is pretty good. However, it ends up running into my base, so that sucks. Alright, he slams down the building, so I'm pretty sure he's going to go for the hearth guards, which would be quite nasty. So I decided to just press units on his baseline. Hope that maybe he gets scared and defends them. But he doesn't have hearth guards, and he doesn't want to defend them. But he ran right into my trap, flooding the gates. The card is very good. At, in these swarm chip decks. Because you give up a lot of value into chipping your opponent, and then you take it back when they base lock you. Or when they build up a push. So now he's going to decide to clear these units. Nice destructive bots. And green prototypes. And then he gives me an ozone purifiers. Which is very helpful for me. Because it'll help me with my unhealthy hysteria. And now he has hearth guards. But unfortunately for him he doesn't, didn't have them before. So here I cycle execution. Because I would rather play Mertz over Execution anyways. But instead I get the... What are they called? I don't know. I get that 4 drop that chips the opponent's base, which is pretty nice. Yep. And then here, he tries to clear that unit. Ends up succeeding, but does not take out the structure. So it's going to chip him again. And then I luckily cycle into a Mertz token. Which I can use to... Run the Vindicators in. And now I see that I have Mishus and Ubas in hand. That should be a GG if he gives me any units, and he does. I'm going to have three units to work with, so I just move them up. Ubas for game. Be sure to check out DJ Paco's channel. It's DJ underscore Paco. Um, space capital B parentheses. Alright, thank you guys for watching. See you next time.